I'm Liam. I'm Wayne. You're listening to In Film We Trust YouTube. A place where we post clips from our recent episode. All links down below in the description. And now, on with the show. <laughs> Michael Mann. Michael Mann's Man Hunter. Man Hunter. Definitely not Red Dragon, Wayne. No, not Definitely Red, not not Red, Red Dragon. Dragon. How much do you think they want to bet that they, ca they got Michael Mann to do this because his, because of his surname? Michael Man Hunter. <laughs> That's a bad pun, Wayne. <laughs> Even for you, that's a terrible Look, pun. Look, it's been a while since I got to make bad puns on here. Yes, it, it's been a... Uh, unless you weren't listening, it's a, it's a month since we've recorded. I've been banking up all of my bad puns. But like you say, 1980s, 1986? 86. 1986, written and directed by Michael Mann, and this is... Michael Mann himself? M Manhunter. The first adaptation of Tom Harris's... Uh, Silence Thomas Harris, the, yes. His Silence of the Lambs series. I'd say Hannibal, actually. Hannibal him. series, yes. Comes uh, at a good time, because you know what came in the post the other? The day when i'm guessing it was one of the sounds of the lambs films no hannibal rising no what was it well, stop guessing please <laughs> okay Mi michael mann's heat 2 the novel oh right oh michael mann's heat 2 oh. i've never read it yet so if anybody's read that mm -hmm. so far or are in the process of reading it please let me know yeah but if it could be a while to get around to reading it yes well if you look at my bookcase all the stuff i've got to get through <laughs> <laughs> but we I'm talk trying about, not to. You talk about Michael Mann, think of some of his most famous films. A very yes. diverse filmography because you've got things like Last of the Mohicans. Right. We have Heat. Right. Generally regarded as his magnum opus. I've heard a lot of people say that. You know what? It's mm. never been God tier for me. No. I like it a lot. Never been a top tier film for no, me. No, I'm exactly I the same. would like to revisit it because it has been several years and I bought the film... You know, I, I'm going to say peer pressure here, Wayne. Yeah. I bought the book on peer pressure. Okay. So I'm looking forward to reading that. I do like Heat. It's a very good film. Very good film, yes. Has been a few years since I've seen it. So, it, you know, the remnants of it are kind of drifting out of the memory. So I'm still looking forward to that. Mm -hmm. But, as I said, it's never been God tier for me. No, me what neither. What about you? Me neither. No, I liked it. I think I could maybe appreciate it more if I went back to it. But I did like it. Um, the very dynamic directorial style right which is something i think we'll be talking about quite a lot in this one the very distinct visual style he has well michael mann is often accused now and again of style over substance mm. well there's a bit of that wayne there well, is a bit of that well look not long ago we talked about body double and oh. we made copious references to how visual a film that was how yes. the visuals tell the story the kind of film you could watch with the sound off and you would still pick up a lot of stuff right I think it's kind of the similar case here. Although Wait. you did mention at one point, you said this film is very visual. You said to its benefit and to its ill. So I did I, think that. So I do think we're going to get we're going to get into things did like. Did you that. agree there? I can understand why you would say we're going that. towards that. We will get to this. Yes. Don't I, don't, don't 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 you know mm -hmm. push the buttons too <laughs> too early. Don't don't blow the load already. Well, you said it. <laughs> we'll get in. You already it. disturbed me with some of your quotes on Body Devil. So. <laughs> Sorry, I'm sorry. I'm just uh, provoking conversation here. Yeah, yeah. You provocateur. Mm. But uh, it took him three years to write the script. Apparently, uh, Thomas Harris is a kind of famously private author. And He's I quite wonder, reclusive. He is quite reclusive. I wonder why it took him so long to actually get round to do adapting. You think, do you think Thomas Harris um, identifies with Hannibal? Possibly, in a sense. Maybe. Well, what are you saying that there's maybe someone he's known in his life, or him himself, who maybe. is a prototype for well, Hannibal Lecter? That's maybe why Thomas is hiding away, Wayne. <laughs> he maybe doesn't want to be found here. <laughs> he's just avoiding suspicion. Yes. Yes. But the book is called Red Dragon itself. So. 1981. I'll explain. Yes. Red Dragon. Yes. One of our favourites, I'm going to say, mainly for Deer Hunter, Michael Cimino. Cimino, yeah. He made a film round about this time. I think it was a year prior, called Year of the Dragon. It was 1985. Starring the tremendous, at least in the 80s, Mickey Rourke. So, that film tanked. Yes. You know what, Wayne? Yeah. That film had dragon in the title. It did have dragon in you the know, title. You know, producers aren't the most savvy of people. <laughs> so they thought So they thought Red Dragon was going to tank also because it had, you know, dragon in the title. Yeah, and the other reason was because, I believe this was actually came right from Dino De Laurentiis. He was worried that because of Bruce Lee, I guess, even though Bruce Lee was more than 10 years dead at this point, they were worried that people would mistake it for a kung fu film. Because the word dragon, I guess, was still being associated with martial arts movies. Yeah. So, I think most people in this production, Michael Mann, William Peterson, the star of this film, they pretty much, everybody thinks the title Manhunter is a little hokey, don't they? Yeah, I think Brian Cox said it. Was, I think even Brian cheesy. Cox said it was cheesy. Do you think? Well, sort of Manhunter. Does that make it sound more generic? Generic, yeah. Because I'd say... Though, on the flip side, let's play devil's advocate here. Right. Manhunter 
it's more explicit in the title. You mm. kind of know what you're getting into. Yeah. Red Dragon. Yeah, I mean, that could be anything, really. Could be quite vague. Quite vague. Yeah, well, if you call it Manhunter, that's for, like, from the perspective of the protagonist. Red Dragon from the antagonist. Right. So like, depending on what you call it, does it go this way and that? Do you have a preference? What? I like the name Manhunter. I like them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, both titles are good for me. I don't have a preference either way. Pick one. Look, you have right. to pick one in this society way. Oh man, the pressure! Right, yeah. No, I'll go with Manhunter. You like? I, I like the term Manhunter. You like the term Manhunter? That's good. Yeah. Someone who was approached to direct, interestingly, David Lynch. David Lynch, and as we were saying, Wayne. As David Lynch, he was an early consideration for director, but coincidentally, Wayne. Here's a little factoid for all you listeners. Mm. In a six, de- six degrees of separation type way, Anthony Hopkins would later go on to portray Hannibal Lecter in Silence of the Lambs. Mm. And Hannibal and Red Dragon. Well, there you go. Mm-hmm. But in Six Degrees of Separation, Hopkins got that part because he was in David Lynch's The Elephant, Elephant Man. Man. Yeah. yeah. A totally different role. Interesting how that, because that was, what, Elephant Man 1980? Early 80s, yeah. So, yeah, 11 years later and it paid off. Yeah. Interestingly, I found that David Lynch, uh, he called the story of Manhunter violent and completely degenerate. Well, Dave, you're fucking violent and degenerate. <laughs> and then, what interestingly, the movie you went on to make instead, Blue Velvet. Love that. I, I, I love Blue Velvet. Blue Velvet is a great movie. Do you yeah. like Blue Velvet? Yeah, I do. It's fantastic. I would love to show you, because I know you've not seen it, Lost Highway. Yes. It's getting it. a 4K restoration by the Criterion Collection very soon. Well, when it comes around, it'll be it'll be back in vogue, so maybe we'll cover we, it. We maybe cover it. I think we'll cover it. I'd then, like yes. to cover it. Yes, good idea. Do you know what? It's yes. almost as confusing, or more confusing, than Mulholland Drive. Excellent. Well, Mulholland Drive wasn't confusing at all. No? <laughs> it was baffling. Yeah, it was baffling. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, with David a clusterfuck. L- yeah, but with David Lynch, I think he was still under cre- uh, contract with De Laurentiis, because he'd not long made Dune. Do you yeah. think he was hesitant to do another studio film? I've never seen Dune. I, I seen one version Was it of any it. good? I think the version I watched, a friend showed it to me, I think it was the version which had... You know when you watch a DVD and you have deleted scenes? Yes. I think this was Dune with all of the deleted scenes restored, and it made me think, there's a reason these scenes were deleted. It's were they bad? It's very long, it's very incoherent. I, I had no idea. I think I stopped watching it How did it hour. compare to the newer Dune? The new Dune. The Dent. Dennis Vanille. Uh, Dennis Villeneuve. I love the new one, actually. You I loved really, it. I really like the new one, yes. Love? I think it was, well, maybe not love, but I very much enjoyed you it. You strongly liked. I strongly liked. They're good. I strongly liked. That's bad English. <laughs> I don't know if I've ever used that. I is, strongly, that is that bad English there? Is that <laughs> bad grammar? I strongly way? like you. Yes, but I, I, I see where you come from. But yeah, but he didn't make this. He made Blue Velvet and Michael Mann went on to make Manhunter. So yeah, Manhunter budget, 15 million. Mm-hmm. And you know how we usually go on about these films. There's certain films in, you know, we've covered and there's certain films down the line that they're almost appreciated later on. You could almost call them a cult film. The cult films, Well, yes. 15 million budget only brought back 8.5 mil. Mm, if my math is right, that means the movie had a loss. Do you know why, <laughs> though? I have actually got a quote from, you know, Hannibal himself, Brian Cox. Do you know mm. why one of the reasons this film tanked at the box office was? Tell me. Here's a quote from Brian Brian Cox. He says, You know, the film got its cult status very early on, really by default, because, basically, producer Dino De Laurentiis went bust and couldn't afford to make any more prints. There were very few prints of it around initially, and of course, it didn't do very well. So because he couldn't afford to keep making prints, it only played in a select amount of cinemas. So it didn't get a wide enough release. Exactly. So it wasn't that it was unpopular, it was just difficult to track down and watch. That could be retrograde, Wayne. <laughs> mm, I suppose so. Yeah, it, but it, we, we don't know. We, we know it failed for whatever reason. That's the reason Brian Cox has put forth. Yes, I suppose so. Maybe not too radical at the time. Maybe it was just, right. uh, again, going bust. That's one of those things. It's not the film's fault. It's studio mismanagement or whatever. But it's a shame that great films like this can be missed, not do very well because yep. of factors like that. 